Today, let's talk about smart home ecosystems. What is a smart home ecosystem, you might be asking? And which one's the best for you? Well, after a two year long journey of frustration. Computer, turn on living room TV. That command doesn't work on device living room TV. Computer, turn on living room fire stick. <laughs> Failure. Find some success. Computer, turn off front entrance lights. I can help you answer that question. So don't click away just yet. Stay tuned for the answers. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. So let's start off by talking about what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is basically an environment in which all the things in it are in harmony and work towards a, a single function. So in a smart home, this is your sensors, your bulbs, your locks, your other appliance gadgets, fridges, stuff like that. And then the central point that's called the, that controls it all, the automations and the routines. This controller is typically a hub and there are so many out there. This can be a daunting task for a lot of people. Today's, for the purpose of today's video, I wanted to narrow it down to three. The Amazon ecosystem, smart things, and home assistant. Today I want to start off with the more user-friendly of the three, which is the Amazon ecosystem. While Amazon didn't create smart home devices, they weren't the first ones to do it, they definitely had a big hand in helping popularize them and get them out to everybody. The Echo line of devices is kind of the heart of their ecosystem, which provide a voice assistant and a hub to run your automations, which Amazon calls routines. The Echoes have gone through several generations, each one building and each one building and improving on what came before it. So like the design, what's the technology in it and what they can do. The newest Echo that serves as a hub is their fifth generation one, which has a Zigbee antenna built in. It's Matic compatible. It has a temperature sensor. It has also ultrasonic waves to detect if somebody's not there, which I find kind of neat. Um, and it can do a lot more with the routines. Uh, it can use different triggers and stuff like that. Adding these devices is actually pretty easy. You would go to devices, pick the brand such as Philips Hue, and then add Zigbee bulb. Um, but Amazon also can add things that say anything that works for Alexa. So for example, like LifeX, you would just go in, pick the LifeX skill, sign into the account, and then hit discover, and it will find all the devices that is associated with that account. So now for the automation side of things. Amazon routines can do a lot just by voice activation triggers. Show front door. but it can also use schedules, locations, motion detection, and uh, triggers from other devices. You can do something as simple as turning lights on or off or other devices on or off, or all the way up to whenever you stop an alarm, it can then read off weather, your daily events, and stuff like that. It's pretty neat. Overall, the Amazon ecosystem is easy to use and highly compatible with a lot of device brands out there. However, it's not without its shortcomings. For example, um, if you have motion sensors that are Zigbee directly connected to the hub, it doesn't register the devices as available if they go to sleep. It registers them as offline, which has caused issues with automations like turn off lights if no motion is detected for five minutes. No, well, by the five minute mark, it's already unavailable and it, it doesn't trigger. A couple of other things that I, other things I found were like, you can't do toggles, which irritate me because if I could toggle in there like using flick buttons I could hit a flick button once and it would turn the light on or off depending on what state it was currently in. Uh, the way it is right now I have to use two different actions to turn devices on and then turn devices off where a lot of the other ecosystems you can you can have this function. It's not a 
huge issue other than the fact it takes two routines and two actions to do. I'd like to condense things as much as possible, have less routines. Other than that, the Amazon ecosystem is easy to use and it's relatively inexpensive with the exception of some of their higher end Echo devices such as the Echo Show 15, the Echo Show 10, the you know, swivel head one. Um, however, I, I can't recommend strictly staying just in the Amazon ecosystem unless you're okay with the issues that I mentioned before. Like you don't need to do any of those specific things. Next up is Samsung SmartThings. This is a very robust and advanced um, ecosystem for routines and devices. Samsung ecosystem includes, you know, your typical LED light bulbs, strips, plugs, switches, and other sensors. But it's not just that kind of stuff. It's also, you have access to all the Samsung smart devices. So their TVs, their phones, their watches, their dishwashers, all that stuff works in it. Um, another bonus is that you're not just restricted to the Samsung brand like you are with other brands. Uh, so for example, Acara, you can only use Acara devices in the Acara system. Their ecosystem has a multitude of brands, anything from Philips Hue to Tuya to Honeywell. You can even at one point get like uh, Nest in there before it was Google. Uh, it also integrates with Amazon, so you can use Amazon as a voice assistant to trigger on and off of these devices. Their hub is the brains of it all. Their hub is in everything. They put it in monitors, fridges, and even this little wireless charging device called the Samsung Smart Station. It also has a Zigbee antenna in it. But that's not the one I want to talk to, about today. The one I actually have and want to talk about is the one that's now made by AOTech, the Samsung V3 Smart Things Hub. It has a Zigbee antenna and a Z-Wave antenna. It's also Matic compatible. So the great thing about having both Zigbee and Z-Wave is that's even more open possibilities for you because there's a lot of good Z-Wave devices and I find the Z-Wave protocol to be a little bit more secure and stable than Zigbee, but having the option to do both is great. Um, Aside from just Z-Wave and Zigbee devices, you can also do similar to Amazon. You can sign into their an account, so like Tuya, for example. If I want to integrate my Wi-Fi Tuya devices, I basically sign into my Tuya account and it brings in what devices is compatible. Not all of them are compatible, but a lot of them are. Um, the automation side of it, is pretty simple. It's kind of a if this and that with conditions set. So it can do things like if this sensor detects motion, turn on these lights. If it doesn't detect these motion for five, 10, 20 minutes, then turn off the lights. You can also do things like toggle. Not you, Amazon, you need to fix that, which is really cool. So with their buttons, you can toggle the lights on and off in one action. You can use a single press, double press, you can hold. They have other devices that are capable of doing this as well. Um, there's not too much I wasn't able to do in just the Samsung automations alone, but it does have its limitations up to what it can integrate with. And that's kind of where I began to lean more towards Home Assistant, which can integrate with almost anything. Um, SmartThings is great, and it's a big step towards automations versus something like Amazon. And I recommend it to any user if that's, if you don't want to do super crazy stuff, like I said, this is the one that you probably buy one time and stay with. Finally is the, how what I feel is the most advanced and the most time consuming of the ecosystems. That is the open source project Home Assistant, like I've mentioned before. This eco ecosystem can integrate with a lot of different brands, devices, and then some. So the end sum is services such as Google Calendars, Gmail, YouTube, moon phases, sun phases, accurate weather stations. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on with the crazy stuff that you can, you can integrate with. 
if you can't find it in the native integrations or the add-ons, there's a great community out there, the Home Assistant community the app that you can install in the Home Assistant and find custom integrations such as like Wise or Tuya Local. And I use a lot of different ones, but there are a lot of them out there. Um, Home Assistant has endless possibilities, but you will be spending a lot of time researching how to integrate what you want to integrate. But there is a great community out there, of YouTubers specifically like Dr. Z's, Everything Smart Home, Smart Home Junkie. I've used these guys a lot to figure out how to do things that I want to do or in make do integrations that are harder to do. Uh, if So like integrating Google into it is not easy. The, the actual how-to is a little overwhelming if you don't understand tech, but these guys it out pretty simple the, the community is just awesome there is an official hub uh, right now it's the home assistant green you can get it for 99 bucks um, but you don't have to you don't have to do that if you have a spare raspberry pi laying around uh, a spare old computer ubuntu actually has a home assistant app that you can install and run it from there there, there are so many endless possibilities of actually having your own hub but mine's that raspberry pi that you saw in the very beginning of the video um, but i've done virtual machines i have friends that have done the whole put it load a nook an intel nook up with uh ubuntu and install the home assistant app and that they're all running it in different ways with the use of a z-wave zigbee stick you can actually connect your own devices to it as opposed to having to use something like smart things or uh, somebody else's hub um, this is great in one sense because if the internet goes out, all your Z-Wave and Zigbee devices that are directly connected to Home Assistant still function. They don't need the internet to work. It all is done locally. Your automations will still go. The downside to using that, it, what I've found is I have a lot of devices. I have like 70 to 80, and I felt like the, the Nortex stick specifically, it just couldn't handle that many devices. I now have the Sky Connect stick which has Zigbee and Thread, but I haven't loaded it down with all my devices. I kind of left them on the SmartThings hub because I, it, I just feel like those antennas are a lot more stable and I don't have things dropping off all the time. Um, but yeah, it, that's, if you want to go completely local, this is the way to do it. You don't need, you can unplug the internet and not need it for all your devices and your automations. The potential for the automations is endless. Uh, as you saw in my last video, my top five automations, all those were done through Home Assistant with a plethora of services and systems. But like I said, if you can think it, you can create it in Home Assistant. Uh, another thing, I've said this in other videos, I love companies that are constantly innovating and making things better. The team behind Home Assistant is always doing that. They're always having updates. They're always pushing the limit of what Home Assistant can do and then bringing in new functionalities. This last year, they're they're really doing a big push to have a local voice assistant, an alternative to Google and Amazon. Uh, and well, Siri and Bigsby, if anybody actually uses that from Samsung. I don't think I've ever used that one, but they want to create a local voice assistant for people so they don't have to worry about their data going to some other cloud server and being used in nefarious ways, um, which I always think is really cool. Home Assistant's also about putting you in absolute control over your smart home. Like That kind of goes back to the whole local, if you unplug the internet, your devices don't need it. You don't need to rely on somebody else's server. You don't need to worry that if someone like Logitech discontinues support for a hub, that you're not out the money that you paid for that hub and your home is just dead. Home Assistant is about you putting you in control of your smart home. However, Home Assistant is not all sunshines and rainbows. Like I've said in the beginning of this section, it requires a lot of time. There, my wife has spent many hours being upset with me because I had to fix the house. Um, having to troubleshoot your house as an IT technician is kind of irritating because you do it all day for work and then you come home and you have to fix your house, same aspect. Um, 
it can be daunting in those aspects and you can't just call a customer helpline. Like I said though, you can fall back on that community in the forums, YouTube videos. Chances are somewhere someone has run into the same issue. Uh, a lot of cool things is uh, if you actually go to the integration itself and it, you click known issues, it'll bring you straight to the, the, the form page of Home Assistant for all the known issues that uh, they're aware of for, for that problem. So for example, my queue quit working with Home Assistant. The integration just broke. Um, and that kind of upset me because that was one of my integrations I relied on to help me take out the trash or remind me to take out the trash. Uh, but I clicked known issues and saw everyone was having the exact same problem as I had. And the actual writer of the integration said, hey, I'm gonna fix this in the next update. And he did. Um, and then gave more clarity as to why it didn't work. Things like this are great, whereas other companies, it breaks and they, they don't say nothing. Like there was a long time where Wise wasn't working with my smart home because of one issue or another. And finally, an update came through the firmware and it just worked. Home Assistant's great, but it's not for everyone. Like I said, I feel like you need to have some kind of technical know-how with Home Assistant and a lot of patience. You're, you're gonna run into issues. It's not a maybe, it's you will run into issues that you're gonna spend a lot of time to fix this. It is a hobby. It is very advanced. There are a lot of moving parts, so with anything, if you have a lot of moving parts, it breaks. You're, you're gonna have to spend some time fixing it, so I don't recommend it for everybody. Those that wanna, are really into the smart home thing and, and see it more as a hobby, this is great. It will give you a lot to do with endless possibilities. So I just covered three ecosystems that you can do, um, but there are a lot out there. There's Google Home, I didn't mention them, they're pretty much a lot like Amazon with a few differences. Um, Homey, Hubitat, Apple HomeKit, and a lot, a lot of other open source stuff such as OpenHab. Um, now you don't just have to stay in one ecosystem. Uh, I don't. Home Assistant is my overall controller of all the ecosystems, but SmartThings is integrated in that, Amazon is integrated in that, I have Apple HomeKit integrations into that. Um, it can, you can overlap them. I don't typically like doing automations in different areas, um, but sometimes you have to. So I, I have a couple automations in smart things. I have a couple of routines in Amazon, but a lot of my automations are in one place. Like I said, you don't have to just stick with one. You, they, they do integrate with each other. Like I said, I, I use all three of them together. Uh, I do 90% of my automations in Home Assistant. I do a couple in smart things. I do a lot of the odd things in uh, Amazon, such as play music, show cameras, read calendar events, stuff like that, that just would be harder to do in Home Assistant. So for the sake of easiness, I'd use that. But I would recommend that you sit down with yourself before you buy anything or get into one ecosystem versus the other and really understand what you want out of your house. If you want a crazy, everything's automated, everything's doing these really advanced automations, then you might want to look at smart things or if you're willing to brave it, home assistant. If you just want things to turn on and off, uh, you want things to play music when you want to, Amazon's a good choice. Um, but there's a lot of them other out there, or there's a lot of other ones out there. So just do your research and uh, I hope this video helped you answer some questions if you had any. And again, if you like what you heard, give me a like, subscribe, and maybe share it with a friend. See you next time.